Yo, hi guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft, and today we're taking a look at ASP UK's gold upgrade package for the Tokyo Marie VSR. Now, I've had the upgraded gun back for the best part of seven months now, so that's really given me time to clock in some gameplay hours with it, see what they've done to it, and most importantly, I've given it ample chance to break. Now, if there's a specific part of the upgrade service that you want to look into, I'll put timestamps in the description down below, so you should be able to skip to the part of the video that's most relevant to you. Uh, I need to make clear as well that I am sponsored by ASP UK and this upgrade package was provided as part of that sponsorship. Now I'm still going to try and be as unbiased as possible in this review but it wouldn't have been fair to you guys if I didn't make that fact explicit before we got into it. And so with that out of the way, on with the review. So ASP UK has been upgrading airsoft sniper rifles for as long as I've known them, from way back in the day when the only sites I ever played at was Matlock Combat Games, you would find these guys out on site field testing the rifles that they were upgrading for people. This isn't even the first gun I've had upgraded from them, my old JG Bar 10 was upgraded by these guys as well. Uh, the service comes in several flavours of what parts of the labour hall in the gun, bronze, silver, gold and platinum. And it's not just VSRs you can get upgraded as well. They have packages for well MBO ones the TNL-96s, Airy Strikers, Snow Wolf M24s. If you have a gun and you want it upgrading, have a look at the site and chances are they've got compatible parts that you can use to increase the performance. In this case, my gun has received the gold VSR package, so this isn't even the max performance they can squeeze out of the VSR platform. As part of the gold package, you get included an AP Advanced 90 degree trigger set, steel piston, steel bearing spring guide and 500 FPS spring, an ASP UK steel cylinder and cylinder head, a concave hop lever, maple leaf hop rubber, 6.01 tight ball barrel and an alloy extended mag release catch and of course the costs for the various labour time that would need to install the parts into the gun. So my first impressions of the upgraded gun when I got it back kind of speak for themselves because I got the whole thing on camera at the time. Uh, when I first got it back I took it to YTA's The Pines back in March and I was recording a video at the time, link up about here somewhere. Now you can just hear the raw exclamation in my voice when I make the first shot I did because I had no expectations of actually hitting the target. Usually is way beyond the usual engagement range, I didn't expect the shot to land but it did anyway and so that just took me by surprise. And that theme kind of continues the entire way throughout the video. My usual tactics when I'm sniping is to run far up the field as fast as I can, get dug in and wait for the enemy to come to me and to walk into my engagement ranges. But this time I was actually able to hang back and pick people off at ranges that I wouldn't usually be able to. So I was actually working as a sniper and less as a scout as I usually do. Honestly, just go have a look at that video and just listen to the raw joy in my voice when I'm able to thread the needle with this rifle. Just threading the BB between two barrels to ding a headshot on a guy. Honestly, I had such fun with it when I first got this bag. So, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this isn't just a first impressions. I had the best part of seven months to play test with this thing and get it to break. So, let's start with the performance of it. Now, when I first picked it up in the shop, we chronoed it right then and there and with a 0.2 gram BB, this was hitting 500 FPS dead. And Six months later, when we're at the Ground Zero NAE, it was still shooting within a hair's breadth of the 500 FPS mark. Um, if you want to see what it was shooting like when I got it brand new, I refer again to the YTA The Pines video that I was previously speaking about. But if you want to see it in a more controlled environment and after half a year's worth of play, I managed to get a shooting test in whilst I was at the NAE. Now, no paper targets this time, I'm afraid, because I was using their shooting range, but I was engaging targets at 30, 50 and 60 metres. It uh, should be noted that 60 meters was the max range they had at that uh, firing range. I'm confident I've tacked people at further distances than that, but that's the longest they had. I was using 0.36 gram Accuracy International BBs. This out to 30. Yeah, that's about right. Thing. 
It's on 60. Headshot on 60. It's on 60. So, small reaction target, 50 meters. from the firing demo 30 meters is a laughing stock for this gun now where the unupgraded TM didn't always hit the 30 meter target with this one if your targets in your scope at 30 meters they might as well call hit before you even pull the trigger it's practically a guaranteed shot 50 meters is a bit more like it however um, at this range you're not going to get a hundred percent of your shots landed on target but human error is a bit of a factor in this sort of things but that's why I'd suggest your average engagement is going to be with this gun anyway now, 60 meters is what I'd call the max effective range with this gun. I can and have scored longer distance shots with this one, but 60 meters is where the majority of your shots you're going to be engaging your target, that sort of range. And unless your target is actively counter sniping, then you're practically safe for most enemy fire. Like, it never gets old to me being able to look down the scope, see a guy who's noticed me and shooting at me, but his shots are falling 10, 20 meters short but I can still reach out and touch him with this upgraded gun. It's just hilarious every single time. Marshall, do we just walk up to the top when we're in, yeah? Yeah, mate, yeah. You think... Yeah, it's just got me on my elbow. Tagged him. But yeah, so 60 meters is what I'd say is the max effective range of this. You can go beyond that, but at that point you've lost the one shot, one kill potential and a bit of luck kind of comes into it. But a solid 60 meters is nothing to sniff at. And it gives me the confidence to say that the upgrade package has effectively doubled the effective range of the TMVSR. So what about the reliability then? Well, as I've said, I've owned this for the better part of seven months now and I've loved every second of it. The only issues I've had cropped up in maybe the last week or two, and that was at the YTA The Kingdom's opening game day. Uh, the first one I was experiencing was that when you go to rack the bolt, it wouldn't actually catch when you got back to here, so the spring had just returned. Um, but luckily for me, they were able to take it apart on site and fix it then and there and told me what the issue was. Um, in this case, what had happened is that the spring guard stopper had vibrated loose and after firing several thousand rounds through this gun, yeah, that's going to happen over time. Um, the quick fix was very simple as well, just re-tighten it, put it back in position. If you want a bit of added security, like add some electrical tape or glue it into position, but it's a very quick and simple fix. Uh, the next issue I had was I'd get the occasional double feeding. Now, usually what happened is maybe once or twice a mag, like it spit out two shots at once, and almost always when I'd got a brand new mag and inserted it into the gun. Now, the reason this is happening is that the original spring in the gun uh, behind the horseshoe clip is starting to wear out. And so because of that, it's allowing, especially when you've got a full mag with the full force of a compressed spring behind it, feeding those BBs through, it allows the second one to slip in behind it. Now, after owning this gun in one form or another for nearly two years now, and in that time, I have not been kind to it, it's kind of reasonable to me that this sort of problem would develop over time. Uh, it should be noted as well is that um, in the Platinum Upgrade Package, the one above this, they do actually add an alloy horseshoe clip, so it's entirely possible that with that one, that issue wouldn't crop up for it. So ultimately then, would I recommend ASP UK's Upgrade Package for the TMVSR? Well, to answer that, I encourage you to go back through my back catalogue of videos from March 2019 till now and know that every long range sniper shot, every time I managed to thread a BB through a tiny gap to hit a guy in cover, was all thanks to this upgrade package right here. So this one comes heartily recommended from me. Um, it's, uh, I'd go as far as to say that it's a lot better than the old JG Bar 10 I had upgraded by these guys. It's effectively doubled the effective range of the TMVSR and I'd make an educated guess that the max range easily tops 80 meters in this one. 
it's allowing me to actually perform a dedicated sniper role for once. Like usually what I do is I run up at the field and like try and get a flanking angle to make sure people can't see me because we'd be in each other's effective engagement ranges. But with this one, I can sit back. I can sit behind our lines and just pick targets off at my leisure and knowing full well that even if people see me, there's nothing they can do about it. So even though they see me, I might be out of their infected range, but they are absolutely within mine. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video review of the ASP UK upgrade package for the Token Movie VSR. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, feedback you'd like to give, maybe you've had your own gun upgraded by these people and want to share your experience, stick it in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.